Let me start off by welcoming you all to this event after the launch of the legacy project on the 25th of uh, May. I want to recognize our guests here with us. Uh, some of our guests will be joining us very shortly. Uh, we have uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, who is the inspirer to number 43 Triloni Park Project, the Honorable Minister Temba Masogo. We are glad to have you with us. And I'd like also to welcome our Brigadier Fonono Dube, who is with us here. Equally, we are glad to have you with you. Say, Bo General, Bo Brigadier. And uh, in his uniform, uh, Father Larry McDonald, Ignoni. <laughs> I want to greet you all tonight and, and mention that it gives me a great pleasure on behalf of the Masilela family and the extended family of number 43, the board of number 43, Triloni Park Trust, the patron as well as the political inspirer to welcome you all to this epoch-breaking event. More importantly, it gives me more pleasure to be able to share with you the thoughts driven by the pain, the joy, and nostalgia of the past. There is no doubt that these are the emotions that have driven us in the past. They will continue to drive us going forward and will certainly form the base for our dreams as peoples of Swaziland and South Africa. However, before going to the issue, I would like to recognize our dear father, Ubtongo Solomon Masilela, the Ark architect of number 43 Tuloni Park Mkulu Mbao Sigime Ulochisa Mandebel Ulochisis Chab Mbonga Noke Mbongosi I would like to begin by quoting from the book number 43 Tuloni Park, Kwama Gogo. For those, welcome minister. For those of us who have read it, uh, you will relate to what I'm going to say. Where in its last chapter, the closure, it says, the events, I quote now, the events of many years at 43, number 43, dating back to 1960s, ended in gratifying manner in June 2004. In the Swaziland ANC, cleansing ceremony hosted by the Freedom Park Trust. This was a cleansing and healing ritual for those South African freedom fighters who perished in Swaziland during the liberation struggle. The two-day event hosted jointly with Swaziland government was meant to take the spirits of the fallen South African heroes back to their motherland, symbolized in the Freedom Park in Pretoria, Etswane. But was this an end? Surely not. If it were, we would not be here tonight. 
the most daunting question is, was it just for South Africans? Probably not. And I'm confident to say it was not. History would judge us harshly if we conclude incorrectly. Clearly, it is not only South Africans that brought the liberation to the biggest economy of the mother continent. It was everybody. It were the Swazis in particular. That is why we are here tonight. It is unfortunate that there were very few Swazis who were willing to be recognized during the writing of the book as well as during its historic launch. Today, I am sure that more than we would, more Swazis would come forth and stand side by side with the courageous Umdolo, who Victor Fagutz, who people Victor Fagutz. At this moment, I would want to challenge the Swazis who were part in the struggle for the liberation of South Africa to stand up, show yourselves, be confident. I will tell you about Project Legacy or the Legacy Project, what it intends to achieve. It, did achieve, it intends to make sure that you are all recognized for your efforts, for the losses that you have suffered. Let me see you guys. Certainly, our struggle should have been carried by more Swazis than Woma Pang and Woma Dol. Again, our project intends to bring you out so that you rightfully take your place in the history books that you contributed to the liberation of South Africa. Failing to do this tonight and tomorrow and the next year would be failing in the documentation accurately of our history. We intend to document our history accurately. And that is what we want to do. This is what this project is about. It is about discussing, it is about debating, it is about documenting, it is about reporting, it is about magogoism, it is about opening doors. It is about historic monuments. You probably will tell us after this, you probably will stand up. Uh, and those who will come in later, we welcome them to stand up. While to some of the organizers of this event, it might have been simply implementing an official procedure for those of us who lived through the struggle, and particularly living in Trelawney Park, as waged from Solent, it was a major milestone, very different. It allowed us to take stock of the events and the risks that had led the liberation of South Africa. We could evaluate what freedom actually meant and how we could maximize the potential benefits it has accorded us, not only for South Africa, but for the entire continent. More importantly, it provided a real closure to the past. To the Masilela family, it also gave us an opportunity to formalize and normalize the relationship between number 43 and the Swazi authorities. Even though attitudes had already started changing and the authorities had begun to consider inhabitants of number 43, in a different light, we had never before had the kind of conciliatory, congratulatory statements uttered repeatedly throughout the proceedings of the cleansing ceremony. This was further amplified on the 25th May 2009, at which point historic commitments were made by the government of Swaziland for the whole world to hear and learn from. This was under the now infamous mango tree. For those of us who have seen the mango tree, you will know what I'm talking about. And I would like at this point to welcome the mayor of uh, 
Albert Lutuli Municipality. We welcome you, Mayor, and uh, ANC Stalwart, Watindam Fas, Watindam Bogot. Why are we here today? First and foremost, it is to rewrite history, help embellish our knowledge of the past and make sure that it is not misrepresented. For many of us, South Africans in particular, believe that Swaziland worked against all the good intentions of the liberation of South Africa. This has been a taboo subject for many years until the launch of the book number 43, Tuloni Park, Guamagogo. On that historic day, in a discussion between the deputy president of the ANC, who is now the president of South Africa, and the king, this subject was raised with the aim of educating people about what it really means. This is in 2007, when our current president was here at the launch of the book. Many moons ago, when Fervud argued that South Africa needed a system that would allow blacks to be subservient to the whites, in order to ease the effort of governance, this spelled the turning point for South Africa's political landscape. It turned forever. On the very day the seed of establishment, the 43, was planted, on that very day onwards, a young couple in the name of Uptongo and Makomu, may her soul rest in peace, made the magnanimous decision to seek refuge in the kingdom of Swaziland in search of better future for their children. The next 40 years or so would unfold decidedly towards the liberation of the biggest economy on the country, continent. It is in this country, Swaziland, that the midway free of this liberation took place. It was at number 43 where the plot was put together and executed. It was at number 43 where the celebrations were hosted in harsh tones of victory and guarded excitement, as well as a confident march to freedom. On the 23rd of June 2007, on the back of prophecies that were made, particularly from King Mswati, the then president of ANC, Jacob Zuma, current president of South Africa, and then minister of enterprise and labor in Swaziland, the seed was planted, which has led to the development of number 43 Triloni Park legacy project. You are encouraged to read the prophecies by these leaders. So you will better appreciate why we are here today. The reason is old. It dates way back to the year 1953 with the establishment of the sinister system of Bantu education. Today, we are unveiling the dreams of many people who would want to see our history better and well documented. This ought to be done in the most objective and unbiased manner. Today, we are unveiling the much-awaited number 43 Tuloni Park Legacy Project, which aims to just that, amongst other things. There is no doubt that this initiative will take many years to craft and put together. It will also take a lot of sacrifice from both sides of the border. However, it is not the pain that we should concern ourselves with. It is the fruits. This will be enjoyed by many generations to come, as well as many peoples of the world. Time is against us. Opportunities are not necessarily on our side. With the world economy behaving the way it is today, resources to finance this initiative will not come easily. 
but we are determined to soldier on. I am honored and deeply humbled to be one of the extending the heartfelt appreciation to the sponsors and partners of today's events. These are the institutions and individuals who had responded the trumpet call, not because they wanted to be counted. They heeded the call because they fully understood the importance of this initiative and they can identify with this initiative. I am glad to announce that the majority of these indigenous establishments I'm glad to announce that this may okay. They felt the agency to stand behind the trumpet call. And deep down the belly of their consciousness. Some of them are here with us tonight. They did not throw money into the problem. They have elected responsibly so to be part of the solution. We thank you most profusely for that generosity. This reminds me of the wise words of Dr. Ben Lamini, a son of the Swazi soil, who said, addressing my younger brother, open quote, arising from your book, I propose we create a five-year project to document all persons by video recorders all those who were affected by the struggle, we need to start now while they are still alive. The first is Magogo. Close quotes. What prophetic words. How profound a lesson. We regret to say that we did not heed these words timelessly. Today, Umagogo is no more. We only talk a bit of her. However, where she is, she is smiling, I'm certain. In Provident Guides to Today's Providence or Proceedings, once again, may her soul rest in peace. The words of Dr. Ben Lamini have been deep, have been a deep inspiration to the Masilela family. I hope we will carry the same level of importance to you all. And in particular, the potential sponsors who shall be visiting after tonight. We welcome you. It is a grave pity that today's event takes us back to the year 2007, a year where we would wish to celebrate as people of both Swaziland and South Africa, celebrate as historic and one would want to chisel one into our minds. That is the year of the launch of the historic book, the launch that is dear to us, very dear. Sadly, though, as a family, it is a year that has left, left us numb and wondering what had gone wrong. In the same year, a mere three months after the launch, the matriarch of the extended family of number 43 was sadly and untimely taken away from us. Umagogo gracefully bowed out of this world. Umagogo wafula tela mtlaka 30 September Two thousand and seven. As if she was waiting for this event to pass and pass it did. Not only that, a few more members of this extended family passed on including our dear young sister, Ngamsile, 
This was on the 14th of October, 2007. This is a year we would want to forget. But it's a year that we cherish. As it spelled out an important turning point in our history. After that has happened, we have advisedly chosen to celebrate it as that it was Umagoto, Umagogo would want us to do. It is an essential part of our past and essential strength for the future. I want to predict the next title of the book. It would be the struggle houses. There are more houses that open their doors to all the combatants during the liberation struggle. And I want to welcome you all to be part of the legacy. And I thank you. Yatogos Agwando.